Today, I'm in Akihabara with my friend Sam. This is Tokyo, Japan's electronics district, and I'm on a mission to find some weird and wacky stuff. But to do that best, I'm going to need a guide. Norm? You called? This is Norm from Tokyo Lens. And today, Norm is here to help show me around Akihabara and the amazing places that we can find some really interesting stuff. It's all so normal to me. I did. It's weird, I'm telling you. All right, I, I guess we'll find out. So the first place that we're gonna check out is right here. This is a vintage, I guess, boutique electronics store that's actually underneath the train tracks here. There's a collection of dozens of tiny shops, each specializing in something weirder than the last. As we dove into the first shop here, my goal was pretty clear, and it honestly shouldn't surprise you all that much. I wanna find some weird, unique Apple stuff, or preferably something vintage. So let's see what they've got. One of the things I love about Japan though, is you can still get vacuum tube amplifiers and whatnot fairly okay, regularly crazy. in places like this. That's wild. We've got the LED shop over here. My goodness. This store has some weird stuff, okay. Of course, you've got like really touristy stuff here as well. Yes. But is it weird to you? you know, like for example, these buttons and these remotes and whatnot, these are secret cameras. What? what? Yeah. Oh hidden? my, those are hidden cameras in buttons? Yep. I don't like that, Norm. So we were very fascinated by the creepy store, but let's not focus on that too much, and instead let's talk about today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Case Coup and their new Magic Stand case. This case is super unique because it provides a kickstand without sacrificing MagSafe capability. The magnetic ring that allows you to attach to a MagSafe charger flips out and allows you to prop your phone up in a multitude of different angles. The cases also use groundbreaking new protective materials, including a 2.5 millimeter raised housing around the camera and 1.5 millimeter raised housing around the display. This case has it all, colors that complement your iPhone, protection from drops, MagSafe charging, and a kickstand for maximum convenience. So if you're interested in learning more, check out the link in the description below. And don't forget to use coupon code LUKEMIANI10 to save 10% off your purchase. Big thanks to Case Coup for sponsoring, and now let's get back to the video. Back in our tech market, I noticed this booth that was selling a lot of AV equipment. And that's when Norm let me in on an interesting cultural difference. So in order to use almost any radio equipment in Japan, you need a radio license, which looks like this. Wow, I had no idea. Do you know why? It's actually common in a lot of countries, but they're really? super, super strict. Like, this was a very, very hard course and hard test to pass. We then headed up to the second level where I found what I was looking for. Kind of. Oh, hey, you need your iPhone 10 leather folio? We got an iPhone 6 over here. iPhone 6? <laughs> this is the first one that we need. Do they actually have it? Is that a good price, you think? iPhone 6 S? Or do you need the Air Mac Express? Yes, you heard that right. Turns out in Japan, what we call the Airport Express is called the Air Mac Express. I never knew that. And unfortunately, I then got distracted. XLR, splicing alligator clips, nine volt battery terminals. You could build anything here. Little robot guy. Clips, plugs, screws. These are like Molex connectors. Pegboards, pegboards. Switchboard with pegboard. More robot guys. This is, I could spend a week in here. Look at this. Unfortunately, as much as I would have loved to spend a whole day in here, we had to move on. Oh man, it's a little, Type. Oh, no. I don't know how to go down. <laughs> yeah, if you just walk straight for it, you're gonna walk clear into it. Ow. Ow. I wanna find a used Mac. Oh. I wanna get as old as possible. Okay, then let's start over here. Okay, that that I like. And with a clear, straightforward plan set in place, we got distracted. There's a mini claw machine! That's money, bro. That's oh. come on, come on! No! It loosened! <laughs> It loosened. It's Did so you see close. that? Yeah. Okay, it's it just went for me. Yeah, Dude, it literally lets go. It does. That's so 
Like, I know that claw machines are rigged, but come on. All right. I'm so close. I'm so close. I've wanted to do this. Come on. Come on, come on. That's money. That's freaking money. <laughs> Eventually, we got tired of throwing our money away, so we moved on to a store that specializes in a lot of Apple gear. Welcome to Apple Lovers Paradise. What you see behind me is a literal wall of iPhones. Look at this. We've got newer stuff here like iPhone 12s. We've got iPhone SE third generations. These actually are new in box. And then we've even got some older stuff here. We can see we got iPhone 5s, we've got iPhone 6s, a ton of iPhone 7s. There's 8s down there. This is blowing my mind. You just don't see stuff like this in the US. We also have, look at this massive wall of iPads. What is that? An M, it's an M1 or an M2, I think. It's the third generation iPad Pro 11 for a little over a thousand dollars. Oh, I kind of want to get this Subaru iPad mini 2. It's in C grade and it's scratched up, but like, I feel like that's kind of part of it. Oh, that's sick. We can even get a MacBook over here. There's a, uh, what is that, a late 2013 for, that's a little bit pricey, that's like $350, I wanna say. There's a 2019 with a Core i9. Actually, wait, I have that exact MacBook. Honestly, pretty similar pricing that you would find in the US, but it's not very common to see just an absolutely enormous wall of iPads and iPhones. This, this is blowing my mind, guys. Okay, so a big mission of mine today is I want to find some real interesting vintage and if possible some vintage Apple. Vintage Apple? Yes. I think I know a place. Perhaps Norm ran with the word vintage, because this had nothing to do with Apple, but was one of the most insane retro gaming places I've ever seen. I am like overwhelmed, and look, they have a Nintendo Virtual Boy here. That's insane! Is this like new in box Sega Mega Drive? I don't even know what half of the stuff that I'm looking at is. This is for a game called Vincha de Go. Oh. And it's like a Japanese people love train games and so you get to be the train oh, conductor. Oh, that this makes the, sense. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Game Boy games on top of Game Boy games. There's another Mega CD 2. This place was like sensory overload. I was completely overwhelmed by the variety and choice. But our next stop was one that I think you guys will enjoy. Yeah, one of the big sort of electronics, I guess consignment or thrift stores mm. is called the Hard Off, which I say with a straight <laughs> face. It's so hard to do. <laughs> it's very hard to do. The Hard Off is where dreams come true and the first place that we're gonna start is in the junk section. I was born in the junk section of a hard off. And there's a bit of a surprise down there for him that I don't even think he knows about yet. Unaware of Norm's trick, we descended into the basement. Luffy, I think you're gonna be excited. Oh here. my god. I think they already found it. Bro, look what you they You gotta have. see this. A 1986 Macintosh Plus next to a first gen iMac G3. Oh my gosh. And look, we even have the laser writer select the Apple printer. Wait, they're, they're bundled. Look, it says one out of two. And then on the printer, it says two out of two. So for, I think that's a little less than $200. We can get a Macintosh Plus and its printer. The keyboard is included. Condition looks good. I don't see the mouse, but I see the power supply. Oh my gosh, am I gonna have to buy a 1986 Macintosh Plus in Japan? If this works, I think I'm buying a Macintosh Plus. Okay, 
This is now the moment of truth. Thank you for the drum roll, Sam. That's the classic Macintosh boot up chime. Oh, oh my god. Yo. Get your head out of the way. I'm sorry. <laughs> What? It just... It just works. It's confused, but it's happy. I don't think it has an OS. It might not have a disc. Maybe we need to put something We don't in. have a mouse either, but... I mean, the fact that a computer this old just sitting in a basement just boots up and works is... <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave. Just the fact that it does that much is pretty amazing because these old computers, they're not so much unreliable as it is the capacitors on the boards just have a certain lifespan and up until like the 2000s, they would almost always die after a couple of years. And that typically means you have to solder new ones onto the board. So that's probably been done on this computer and this has clearly been taken care of I mean, I, I think I gotta buy it. You gotta buy it. I think I gotta buy it. With my new purchase in hand, we stopped for a quick bite to eat and then headed back out. So Wait, this is an original iPad. I'm sorry, what? 64 gigabyte original iPad in good condition for eight dollars <laughs> what? what what well if you need vintage gaming this is the place for you check out this massive amount of playstations here's some original playstations you can get a playstation 3 in box for like 50 bucks you get a playstation 2 in box here i think that's about six dollars something like that this is quite something. This is normal for you? Uh, ish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm Unreal. I'm surprised to see the Famicom Disk System. This is a Nintendo game system that used like floppy disks. Oh wow. So you'll see these yellow floppy disks branded Nintendo across them and they went in these. I've never actually seen one, ever. And there's three and there's they're three. about 10 bucks. Yeah. Oh, there's an iPod Touch 4th Gen. Is this all iPod Touches? Yeah. There's the original iPod Shuffle from like 2006. Okay, we've got one more hard off to go into today. I got my hard on for the hard off. Let's get going. <laughs> I can't even think. <laughs> I mean, a Wii is obviously not rare, but... Oh, that's beautiful. It probably comes with everything. You just know. There's like 20 Wiis. Look at that. We got the gold edition Mario Kart. Is that a Subaru? A Another Subaru, Subaru iPad? We gotta buy it. Couple hundred dollars for a 4K iMac. Here's a real older one. This one, let's see, what's this? 1.6. I think this is a base model late 2013, but it's only $200. That's not awful. We gotta go down and check out the junk. So let's get down there. Okay, here's one. Because I don't think these are super common in the U.S. yet. Little portable Wi-Fi routers. Is that what that is? Yeah. I'm sorry, oh, it's what? A it's, wifi. it's a WiMAX pocket Wi-Fi. This is a VHF UHF card. Wow. So you can tune into Japanese television direct to your computer. Directly to your not PCIe. I think that might just be PCI. <laughs> Look at this. This is an iDJ. And basically you put two iPods in it and you can mix the songs together. Like you're you're using you're using the iPods as a turntable. That is so cool. Oh my god, this song again. This song is I'm about to be getting funky. <laughs> that guy just completely just went, nope, I'm out of here. <laughs> Gosh, I have to bring this back to the US now. But look at it, it's so cool. You just have no love for the stuff you have purchased. Sam, 
has either dropped or forgotten these bags at every single place That's we've gone. That's not true, Norm. You've been bonking them. You've been leaving them. You've been dropping them. Um, you know how we got the IDJ? What about... Oh my god. ID, IDJ 2. <laughs> we gotta get both. We have to do it. <laughs> Why is this one so much bigger? It's like the, we have it's to the do pro it. version. How do they have both versions that one of the even, IDJ? That one wasn't even on the internet. <laughs> you gotta get it. Hip hop. How are there two... How are there both IDJs in the same junk of the hard off? Oh, let's it's do the that same mean. junk of that's the hard really off. <laughs> this doesn't Such. make any sense. This isn't Such junk. Such a sentence. This is treasure. Oh my... Bro, it's still like wrapped. This is like... Except for the poo-poo stains. But... It does have some poo-poo stains, but it's <laughs> pretty happens. good. God damn it, where am I gonna put these? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, there's someone coming. Oh god, oh no. Go back, go back. <laughs> abort, abort. <laughs> okay, now I'm going. Say yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, after a very successful day, we've raided multiple hard offs at this point, and I think we've got a pretty good haul. I've got two IDJs, a 1986 Macintosh, a couple of iPods. Uh, Sam got every iPhone ever made. Oh, we got an iPad 2, yeah, that's we in there. IPad. We got another iPad with a Subaru logo on it. Uh, Norm got a bunch of footage of us being idiots. There's lots of that. Lots and lots of footage. Tons, tons. It's Sam too much to today. even list. <laughs> uh, so check these guys out. They'll have videos and I'll link those down below. Thank you all so much for watching. And I've got another video to film right here actually. So I will catch you guys in the next video. We had so much fun wandering the streets and shops of Akihabara. And I have to give a huge shout out to Norm from Tokyo Lens for making this entire video possible. He really pulled through for us and he showed us some really, really cool spots. That day in Tokyo was one of the most fun things that I've ever done for this channel. And I'm so glad to be able to share it with you guys. So leave a like down below, make sure to get subscribed, check out Sam and Norm, their channels will be linked below and I will see you guys in the next one. Guys, get the rod. Wow. With the rod, with the rod. There's also a Sega Saturn plastic model kit.